All right, everybody, welcome back to another Diecast Mania model review. Today, we're taking a look at a DCP or Diecast Promotions by First Gear 164th scale model. So, as you can see, this is model SKU number 60 0740, and it is a Kenworth T800 triaxle with 38 inch sleeper and a Fontaine Magnitude Low Boy that comes with a bunk, cradle, and Elk River 6 axle hydrosteer with a very large bridge beam load. So the model shown here is one out of three versions of this model. It has the red trailer with the black and red cab. Another version is the red trailer with the red cab and a white cab with a black trailer. So the two sheets show the different functions of the low boy as well as uh, different details for configuring the entire setup. The model is enclosed within two securely taped together plastic trays and once we get those taken care of we can start to lift the model out of the box in its different parts. So first out of the box is the Kenworth T800 tractor and it is a very sharp looking truck with some very nice looking details as well. This bag includes optional stickers, the actual bunk part some spare pieces such as mirrors and such, and the actual flags and reflectors that will be fitted later on. This section is the Elk River Hydrosteer part of the setup. As you can see, it has, well, hydraulic cylinders to help steer, as the name entails. And here is the Fontaine Magnitude Low Boy. There's a little bit of packaging to be removed, like this tape here, and a rubber band at the end. And here we have the bridge beam, which is made out of aluminum and has a satisfying metallic sound to it. As you can see, it's a very large piece. And at the end of the beam are markings denoting which span number it is. Each of the three different variations of this truck comes with a different number printed on the bridge beam. And the last out of the box is the bag containing the tie-down chains and the cables that connect each section. Alright, nice. Now that we've gotten everything laid out, we can take a close look at each part and begin the assembly process shortly. Starting off with the first part of the set, this is the T800 tractor itself. As you can see, it looks very sharp and it has a steering front axle. The model is capable of following a pretty decent steering curve and rolling pretty nicely as well. Now by applying gentle pressure, we can see the model has actual suspension modeled in the rear axles. Throughout the model, there's a lot of nice chrome work, and moving on to the front of the cab, there's no exception. The hood opens to reveal a nicely detailed engine. And on the back, you have a nice headache rack with the chains and all your lines. The T800 is a very nice tractor, and it complements the set very well. So here we have the 3 axle Fontaine Magnitude Low Boy in red. As you can see, it is no ordinary Low Boy. It has these extra attachments that allow for the hauling of the beam and for the haul back setup. Now taking the section with the fifth wheel off, we can reveal the standard trailer. Here we can see the simulated wood decking and the individual supports for the side planks. Here we have some nice steel wheels and tires. See the brake and turn indicators. And again, we can see the little supports for the side planks had this been a standard low boy hauling equipment. Now getting the specialized hauling gear back on, this is the fifth wheel plate that holds the actual beam. And here is the section that holds the wheels It had this been in the haul back position. As you can see, everything fits on relatively securely. Now this is a close-up of how the neck disconnects and how it reattaches. The neck hooks back on and clicks in place. A bit of specialized hauling gear in this set is the actual Elk River Machine Co. Hydrosteer Trail. As you can see, it hydraulically steers the two axle bogies and this allows the beam hauling setup to maneuver quite nicely as well as even crab steer into position. So hopefully this gives you an idea of the posing capabilities as well as the abilities of the real piece of equipment. As you can see, nice steel wheels, DOT striping, and the stinger moves up and down to allow for the beam to be locked in place. 
and as we can see on the mod flaps, Elk River Machine Company. Moving on with the trailer, we can see that it's nicely detailed on the bottom as well with the axle assemblies and a little bit of suspension travel as well. And as you can see, this is the plate that the end of the bridge beam rests on and it pivots as well. So this is the haulback configuration. It's for when either the beam hasn't been picked up yet or it's been dropped off. It's pretty simple. Obviously, you just connect the low boy as you would in a standard setup. And you place the twin steer on top and optionally put some chains on. Now we're going to be setting up the full beam hauler configuration. As you can see, there is a cable that needs to be plugged into the neck of the trailer that plugs into the first swiveling section that the beam will rest on. Additionally, the extra long cable that comes with the set is unfurled and plugged into the back of that and into a part on the twin steer. Now it's a very loose fit so if you plan on permanently displaying this a drop of glue in the careful spot might be recommended. So as you can see you basically just connect it and then you start to pull on the twin steer until the section of cable is tight. Now taking the little plastic bag apart so we can remove the little warning flags and the plastic reflectors. Flags are little pieces of red fabric with a metal hook on the end of them and the reflectors are a little piece of silver plastic with a dot of orange on them. Now, now by following the pictures on the provided instruction sheet we can uh, set up the reflectors and flags nicely. Now it is a bit of a tedious process uh, as you can see here the flags and reflectors basically slide onto that big long cable section that I believe is for the brakes, electronics, and uh, hydraulic line. As you can see, uh, they, they just hang on there. Um, nothing really stops them from moving around other than friction. And like I said earlier, it is a fairly tedious process and applying pressure to the wrong area can cause them to bounce off and you'll have to start again. But uh, because of this, I actually recommend crimping the ends of the flags with a needle nose plier once you've attached them to the cable. Now the last little part of this is attaching the chains that hold the actual beam down. As you can see there is a tension side to the large spring and a side to the simple wire hook. So you hook the end with the spring on first and pull on the opposite end of the chain over the top of the beam and hook it onto the other side. Tension in the chain should be able to hold the beam on pretty securely. Now at the opposite end of the beam, the same method is repeated once more. So if one played around with the configuration of the beam just a bit, it is potentially possible to actually slip the chains in between those two simulated rebar loops and opposite ends of the beam for extra secure fit. And just like that, the beam hauler setup is complete. As we saw, there was a little bit of assembly to be done, but once we've got that all squared away, it is a very impressive and imposing mod for the serious collector and for promotional purposes. Now due to its relatively large size coming in at over 3 feet long, this model is a little less than practical to pose on your average shelf, though it would make one heck of a conversation piece in the office or in the collection. So whether you're an avid 164th scale collector, work in the industry, or are simply fascinated by some of the largest truck and trailer combinations out there. Don't miss out on your chance to own this absolutely stunning model. As mentioned earlier, it's sold out from First Gear directly, though plenty of their dealers still have it in stock. So anyway, there you go. Thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed the video. We'll see you next time.